the benign manifestation which is common to all species that will be fever with chill and rigor, anemia due to burst of RBC and splenomegaly because spleen is the site where they will try to engulf the parasitized RBCs and they will try to destroy them as a result the spleen will enlarge in size. So, this is seen in all species because these are the features of benign uh, 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 malaria. There is another form of malaria called as malignant malaria which is seen only in falciparum and this malignant malaria of course, the uh, pathogenesis I will uh, I will tell you first why malignant uh, malaria is seen only in falciparum species not in other species. The reason is falciparum undergoes I mean in falciparum various specific pathogenesis events take place which are not there in other species. One of the important event is sequestration of the parasite, sequestration of plasmodium falciparum by cytoadherence and rosetting. Cyto adherence and rosetting. <coughs> that this means what? They say, see, uh, this is a RBC, and this is the malaria uh, parasite inside Plasmodium falciparum inside. They say that Plasmodium falciparum releases a protein, expresses out a protein, secretes a protein, which is called as PF EMP protein. EMP is erythrocyte membrane protein. So, these proteins it will release out. So, these proteins they will they will come out and they will be coated on the surface of RBC. They will be coated on the surface of RBC and these erythrocyte membrane proteins are sticky in nature. Because they are sticky in nature this results in adhesion. Adhesion to what? One side they will be adherent to vascular endothelium. Other side they may be adherent to normal RBCs also. So, that leads to rosetting. Cytoadherence means adhesion to the vascular endothelium. Rosetting is the clumping of normal RBCs to parasitize RBC. This leads to sequestration of the parasite to the vascular endothelium. So, what you can see here this property lead to what? See this is the blood vessels, this is the total blood vessel in that a part of the blood vessel is occluded. So, sequestration of plasmodium falciparum especially in small capillaries, small capillaries of deep vessels, this leads to vascular occlusion and this is the main mechanism why all these malignant manifestations that take place. Malignant manifestations the various complications seen under malignant tertian malaria are cerebral malaria. Why cerebral malaria takes place? Because of the brain capillaries will be occluded leads to cerebral anoxia. Okay. Other than that black water fever Okay, algid malaria. Algid malaria is a shock like stays. Okay, so all these are the, are the various uh, complications seen in malignant uh, malaria. Then complications seen in other species. Other species uh, complications like nephrotic syndrome. Nephrotic uh, syndrome is a complication specifically seen in Plasmodium malaria nephrotic syndrome, tropical splenomegaly syndrome, tropical splenomegaly syndrome it, it is seen in mainly vivax or maybe in other species also. 
tropical splenomegaly uh, syndrome is characterized by splenomegaly and pancytopenia and hyper IgM three uh, uh, components will be there splenomegaly pancytopenia and hyper IgM okay so all these are various manifestations fine so now let us discuss about a bit of epidemiological features where malaria is uh, endemic wo, uh, which is the place where maximum number of malaria cases are found is it India or it is outside India accounts for only 10 percent of total malaria burden the main malaria burden reside in sub Saharan Africa which accounts for 85 percent of total malaria cases India and other seer countries Southeast Asian region uh, countries both together they account only for 10 percent of total cases and of course in the world Plasmodium vivax is the most common species whereas especially India is concerned they say that the most common species plasmodium falciparum and vivax is almost same almost same you can say that 50 percent and 49 percent almost same followed by plasmodium malaria malaria is mainly in the tumkur and hassan district of karnataka and the rarest is plasmodium oval and plasmodium oval they say that it is very few reports are there in India those places are Gujarat, Odisha, Delhi, Assam Okay, so these are the few places where plasmodium oval have been reported. Okay, so Gujarat and also Kolkata you can write. Gujarat, Odisha, Delhi, Assam and Kolkata these are the few places where plasmodium oval have been reported. Very very rare, but there are some cases. You can't say that it is, it is not there. Can you say? Uh, can you tell me which is the most endemic state in India? They say that Odisha accounts for the most endemic, I mean the uh, overall the endemic zone is eastern India, eastern India is the most endemic zone, among that Odisha accounts for 24 percent of total malaria burden of India and in Odisha 92 percent of cases are due to plasmodium falciparum that is where it is more uh, dangerous maximum cases are plasmodium falciparum ok then there are certain immunological phenomena immunological risk factor as I told you that plasmodium falciparum feeds on hemoglobin to produce digested by product. So, hemoglobin is the nutrition for malaria parasite and adult hemoglobin is the most susceptible hemoglobin to plasmodium. Plasmodium usually feed on adult hemoglobin. However, there are certain uh, uh, conditions like you if you have a defective hemoglobin like thalassemia, sickle cell disease, fetal hemoglobin all these cases they are resistant to plasmodium falciparum and even spherocytosis. Spherocytosis the RBC will be fixed it is not flexible. So, uh, this is a condition where also it will be resistant to malaria parasite the 
infection cannot set in the, the malaria parasite uh, cannot infect inside. Similarly, G 6 P D enzyme, G 6 P D enzymes are essential for plasmodium to survive. So, if you are G 6 P D deficient again those patients will be resistant to falciparum. Similarly, for Vivax the Duffy blood group antigens are important. The Duffy blood group antigens present on RBC membrane over the RBC membrane Duffy blood group antigens are there. Those antigens are receptor for Vivex, receptor for Vivex. So, if individual is Duffy negative, if this Duffy blood group antigens are absent then those individuals will be resistant to plasmodium vivus infection. So, these are the various associated conditions where the risk of plasmodium is, is enhanced. 